And welcome back to another episode of HU Flow Podcast here on HU and Richmond Page. As always, we're your host, Stephen and Marilyn here, bringing you all the good vibes and such on this lovely day in January. Now, today, we, for our guests, you know we always love having various guests in different fields. Today, we're focusing on education. And today, we have Malik Nelson on the podcast. Malik Nelson is a teacher based on Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, a city where I was born and raised in. Malik, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Glad to be hey. here. <laughs> hey, we appreciate you having you on. So, Malik, you know, we typically, since originally how we do our podcast, we always have students on, we ask them about their major and all that stuff. But then we're going to start differently. So, your profession, your teacher. So, specifically, how long have you been doing this teaching for, and what made you get into teaching? Um, well, officially, I've been doing this for about six years or so. Um, unofficially, I've been doing it for probably over 12 years. Um, I started off as a intern for the Philadelphia Freedom Schools. So it was a summer enrichment program. We would go out to communities and just teach literacy to students. Um, and it was always just uh, Afrocentric. So we were trying to expose students to people that look like them, stories that reflected their experiences, et cetera. Uh, before that, I had no intention of getting into education, honestly. Uh, I was actually thinking about being a game designer. And one of my English teachers, who you actually know, Ms. Suleiman, she was my ninth grade English teacher. And she was like, well, why don't you sign up for this program? I think that you will like it. And after my first summer as an intern there, I was like, this is what I want to do. I, this is a way for me to give back to my community. Okay. And I pursued education. Oh, well, that's eighty. Oh, oh I'm, I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> when you mentioned that, I'm like, wait, how old is Mr. Layman then? Because like, I'm <laughs> younger than was, bro. Oh, okay. Um, Never asked that question. <laughs> yeah, I'm not asked that question too. I think I'm gonna get slapped for that, but it's okay. Um, so, so I, I like the fact that your transition. You know, you thought at one point I wanted to be video games, but nah, I actually like teaching and it, enjoyed it. So you've been doing it for a long, long time officially. Um, so to kind of bridge off that, so you're originally from Philadelphia, um, correct? I am, born and raised. Okay, so tell me a little bit about your life growing up in Philadelphia. You know, uh, how how was your life growing up in the city at the time? A brotherly love still is, but now <laughs> a history love, a, a history something. I don't know, it's something like that. It added any type onto it. I know they switched it up. <laughs> yeah, they, they added history love too. To it. Okay. Well, um, my upbringing, I, it was a mixed bag, to be honest. So I grew up in foster care. Um, I was in foster care from very early on in life. So I've been in different parts of the city. Uh, my upbringing is pretty much reflected the different households I've been in. Primarily, though, I was raised by a pastor, actually, Reverend Loretta Lucas. She passed away. Um, but I was with her for the last eight years of my life before I became independent, essentially. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I have a lot of different experiences because my family has been on different sides of the track, to be honest. Um, and like I said, my experience in the different households I've been in, has it's been a wide variety. Okay, I get you. So when it comes to like, when it came to like high school, because this is my last question, I'll ask for our pass out of Maryland. When it came to like high school, was that since you're in a foster care a lot, was that always an issue of like switching different schools because of different foster foster homes, or like were you consistent at one place? In high school, I was uh, pretty consistent. So in high school, I was with my uh, foster mom, Loretta Lucas, who I just mentioned. Um, I did jump around before then. So like elementary and middle school, I switched out a few times, uh, which made it academically. I always did well, to be honest. Um, I'm a very good test taker, to be honest. So I didn't struggle with that too much. It was actually, it kind of like frustrated my brother who was in foster care with me because I didn't do much studying. I didn't have to do much just to pass. Um, but it did affect the social aspect of it. I didn't really interact a lot. Uh, because, you know, starting relationships where you don't know what's going to happen 
was a problem for me. So I kind of just kept to myself. Um, it wasn't until pretty much like my last year of high school that I started to open up more. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, I mean, because like a lot of our viewers, you know, are very uh, high school demographic. So we like to talk, ask, you know, even though you're from a, it's a different generation than when you took high school, it's still good to know about your experience as a whole because it could relate mm -hmm. to someone else and tell them like, hey, you know, I went through the same thing, but look how I turned out, you know? Yeah. Um, a lot of times when you're in those type of experiences, it can kind of lead the opposite direction. But with that being said, Marilyn, I pass it on to you. What would you like to ask me? So for many of our guests, we like to ask them about their transition from high school to college. So for you being in foster care, I know we might have some viewers who were in a similar situation as you. What did that look like for you specifically? Mm, there was a lot of challenges uh, in that for me. For one, I don't think I was necessarily academically ready. Like I said, I didn't, I didn't struggle in high school. Um, in fact, uh, I was actually accepted into Central High School. So I did a year at Central, uh, which is the number two school in Philadelphia right after like Masterman. Um, but I did get kicked out. Um, <laughs> I got kicked out more so because of behavior issues than it was academic. And I was sent to my neighborhood high school, which didn't challenge me. Um, so I passed very easily. I sat in the back of the classroom. I didn't have to do too much work. Um, and I know a lot of my peers kind of shared similar experiences as that. Whereas though, if you were at the top of the class, there wasn't much for you to do. There wasn't much of a push because they had so many, they had so many other students who were struggling more so. Um, so even if you were like a C student, you pretty much passed with like a B or an A because they curved the grades and they had to teach those students who were struggling. So when I got to college, the work was a lot different. Um, I used to tell my wife all the time that like my math experience, for instance, I felt as though I took Algebra 1 four years in high school. They put a different name on it, but the concepts were pretty much the same because, again, there was a lot of other students that they kind of focused on the lower end, whereas though the students that were in the middle or the upper end kind of just got pushed ahead. Um, other than that, the other major thing that I dealt with transitioning from high school to college was, like I said, that social piece. Um, I was independent by that time. My mom had suffered a stroke in my last year of high school. Um, so she was bedridden in my freshman year of college and I moved out on my own and she shortly passed away afterwards. So in my freshman year of college, I was on my own. Um, I was no longer a ward of the state because I aged out of the system. And like I said, my foster mom had passed away. So it was just pretty much me. And then, you know, I had to make connections and I wasn't really equipped for that because <laughs> I just started to learn how to build relationships. Wow, yeah, a lot of uh, reality when it comes to transitioning. Um, so how did that affect, and also you had mentioned that you knew you had wanted to be a teacher. So were you looking for any colleges or picking specifically based on what you knew you wanted to study? I did. Um, it's not the best example. <laughs> But I only applied to one college. I applied to Temple because they had a great um, education program. Um, and even though like, I knew I was interested in education at the time, I wasn't sure what direction I was going to go in. Uh, initially, I was looking at doing educational policy, urban ed policy. But I did want to get classroom experiences before I got into policy. So I was like, All right, well, I don't know. Let's see which direction it will go in. But I knew that Temple had a great college of ed. So whichever direction I was going to go in, I knew that Temple would probably be the best bet. I applied to that one school. Perfect. Yeah, I only applied to like two schools myself. So <laughs> I'm lucky I'm here. Um, and then my, he was like, I definitely applied to like 20. Um, <laughs> As a so, teacher, you know, like especially I teach 11th grade primarily. So I always have to, you know, talk my students through the application process. And we always have to tell them, like, you know, you want to apply to more than one school, have your backup school. But then <laughs> <laughs> I'm sound like a hypocrite because I just applied to the one. Uh, <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> I definitely I not like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
So my final question before I pass it on to Stephen is um, what, for many students, uh, my, myself, I mean, I felt like I was a pretty good test taker in high school and then I got to college and I'm like, well, it's a little bit harder. So what were some things that you did to help you um, kind of teach yourself in those aspects? Um, to be honest, I think it really came down to surrounding myself with uh, the right people. The people that I was around have always been kind of academic minded. So I couldn't be in that group and like failing out of college. So I made sure that, you know, I was on top of my stuff. I took extra time to study. Um, I got into studying groups when I needed to, especially with math. Math was probably my hardest subject to kind of get into. And like I said, part of that is just based off my high school experience. I wasn't challenged in that area in high school. So in college, when the concept became dramatically harder, I felt like I was behind the eight ball. Um, so I just had to, I had to seek help. Um, I got tutoring and like I said, I joined different study groups in order to stay on top of it. Yeah, definitely. And for those at home, always take advantage of your college's resources, like tutoring, um, student peer review and stuff like that. Um, and find a crowd that is going where you want to go because your friends mm -hmm. can make or break your freshman year. So Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, the crazy, you know what, bro? I I should have did tutoring in college, but I didn't. You know, it's fine. Um, I'm just smart myself sometimes. But um, so that's me. Um, you know, I'm I'm lying by the way. Please do tutoring. I'm I'm not a good example of tutoring. <laughs> like, no, I I pass well, but like I still fail the class. It's not fun sometimes. But um, what is it? so no, no. So let's talk about more about your profession. So, um, specifically, we're in around the times of COVID. 19. Um, right now, it's hard for kids to sit, still be in the classroom. So for you, how has basically that adjustment been from going from, okay, I'm in a classroom space to online space been for you? Has it been great to be able to teach kids online or has it been a struggle? It's been a struggle, uh, not just for me, but for the students as well. I think my biggest issue has been um, Trying to make sure that I'm understanding. I mean, you know, so I I hold pretty high expectations for my students. Um, I feel as though that it's only right for me to hold high expectations. That's the way that I was raised. Uh, like I said, the last house that I was in, my foster mom, who I referred to, that's just my mom. Um, but she was a pastor. So she had really high expectations for me and my brother that she raised. And she didn't accept. She didn't accept failure. Um, even when, you know, like I was struggling in high school, when I got kicked out of Central and got sent to Martin Luther King, one of the things that she said to me was that every class, every high school has a graduating class. It's your job to make sure that you go to school and get as much information as you need in order to pass. Um, and if you feel like you're not being challenged, then it's on you to go out and seek the challenges that you need. Unfortunately, I didn't seek out those additional challenges. But nonetheless, I, that's something I did carry with me. So as a teacher, that's kind of the way that I approach the classroom as well. I hold expectations for my students because I feel like they can succeed. They all can succeed as long as they give them that push to succeed. However, with COVID, it's harder for you to really pay attention online. Like not that many, some people do really well with it. Those people who are really self-motivated, who keep themselves organized and on track, is no problem for them. For the students who learn better with you in front of them, when I can actually stand next to them, say, hey, make sure that you're doing X, Y, and Z. When I can give them that extra one-on-one -on -one support in the middle of a class, um, for them, it's been a lot harder. And for me to still hold the ex those expectations, it's been met with mixed success. <laughs> My students still know that I have their best interests at heart, uh, but for some of them, they're just checked out. And it frustrates me as an educator because, you know, I feel as though that the work that they have, they can do. It's just not getting done. Um, and the numbers have dropped dramatically in my, so first marking period, I had a lot of students who were struggling. Um, second marking period has gotten a lot better. Uh, I think I have maybe about five or six students 
who haven't pulled up their grades where they should be. But it just really comes down to the environment. It's hard to really kind of teach in this current environment. And we're hybrid. So, right. So you're so since you're a hybrid, and that's interesting because most of the teachers we talk to, they're in strictly online. So they're like just saying from the online basis is just not the greatest experience. And you know, it's hard to teach the kids like what they actually need. Mm-hmm. And since you're in since it's a hybrid, so hybrid for those at home, that means that some of the classes are in person, not all of them, but some of them are. So with that hybrid template, so I know for the school the schools in Philadelphia, there was a lot of talk of just being strictly online at the at one point during the very beginning. Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming since your school did a did a hybrid instead instead of just doing online because they were trying to help still get kids coming in so they can get some education. Um, mm-hmm. See, okay, so you know my next question I was going to ask because um the uh, the follow up on that is um this not just in the uh, Philadelphia but around the United States specifically a lot of a lot of places are being told like hey figure it out on your own in terms of how to handle school management of the school district. And for a lot of school districts, they're just pushing for the online for the, for the pandemic over. Now, do you believe that there's going to be an issue of like a gap year in terms of knowledge that these kids will lose out because of the pandemic? And do you believe that there's a way to solve that? Um, I wish there was a way to solve it. I don't believe that there is. Um, I do believe that there's going to be a lot of students that are behind. Um, like I'm really... To be honest, like I'm really conflicted with the entire experience. I don't feel as though that virtual is the best way to go about it, but it's better than nothing. Um, and it's certainly safer than just, you know, wishing for the best and sending all the kids back into school. But with the way that things are going, I mean, unless they're going to keep everyone in their current grades, students are going to get pushed ahead. They're going to go to their next level and I know for a fact in my classroom it's taking us longer to get through the material now luckily like I teach English so a lot of the things that I go over is repeated and then built upon so yeah you learn about theme pretty much all through middle school and high school but it just gets more complicated as you go through it but subjects like math where everything is built on the previous year I don't know what's going to happen. Like, you can't really get into Algebra 2 without really having a good understanding of the Algebra 1 concepts. And that's not something that is, like I said, like English, where it's just the same thing, just more complex. It's completely different, but it's based off of what you learned previously. Right. See, and I can can agree with you on that, because just like, depending on the the subject, it's going to be very difficult for them. And also... To add on that, I'll ask this last question before I pass to Maryland. See if there's any more questions. It is, would you even try to still recommend college to your students at this point? Because for a lot of our guests, they're like kind of like, if you, it's kind of like it's a 50 50. They would rather them to probably take, it, take the, a year off and, you know, wait till after because there's so many factors to consider with college now with the pandemic. Still looming, and like for example, like uh, going to a college, still charging the same amount when they shouldn't because mm-hmm. it's online education. You know, going on campus with the risk of COVID outbreak because pe- not everyone's going to follow the rules. Unfortunately, um, you know, is that would you still like? Like I said, would you still recommend to your students like, hey, you should think about college, or you know, would you recommend another option for them? So, I'm um, well. For- all right, I got two completely different ideas <laughs> here. Um, on one hand, as far as if you're considering college, I would say still go for it. Um, but I think it's more so just like a mental thing. I know people have taken a year off that struggle to get back to it because then you start working, things come up, life happens. Um, when you're making money, especially if you get a job that pays well, it's hard for you to switch gears and be like, okay, let me stop that and go to college where you're doing work study and making half the amount or wherever the case may be, or you have to do work and school full time. Um, I just find it hard for people to switch gears in that, that instance. So I always say, just go straight to it. Um, and then kind of work it out as you go through. 
But on the other hand, the second thought that I was having was that I've never really advocated necessarily that everyone needs to go to college. Um, I've always had, sometimes it's been like private conversations, depending on the school that I'm at. Um, in particular, like when I was teaching at Mastery, Mastery has always been very college focused. Uh, but I don't think that college is for everyone per se. I think that some people do better at trade schools. Some people do better with like apprenticeships, um, going with a union, whatever the case may be. I, like furthering education, yes, absolutely. But what that looks like is different for different people. College isn't the best environment for everyone. Um, and maybe you want to do something a little bit different and go to a community college during this time period and then transition to a formal four-year college after in-person learning has resumed. So, yeah. I mean, that makes sense. I mean, it's kind of conflicting. Cause like for me, you know, I, I got when some, some one of my, um, there's a, there's this girl who's a high schooler who really admires me and decided, Hey, I'm gonna go to my, my, the school that I went to, but not just because of me. Cause I, may, I wanted to make this clear to her. Like, I don't want you to pick a college because I went to there, you know, yeah, yeah, just because yeah. I went there doesn't mean, it doesn't mean I love it. Like you got to think about that. <laughs> like, that's a lot of money. Like, and I'm yeah. telling the same story. Like I don't want people picking colleges because they know me. And they know, oh, I'm so great and awesome. And I turned out so great. No, no, don't go. So, bro, you <laughs> don't know anything about the college. You just worry about me. So, please think deeply about stuff like college because I don't want you all in debt for thousands of dollars. That's the exactly. biggest thing. I, I think for me, that's one of the bigger things as well because it. I had to think about money. Um, mm-hmm. Come Considering like the background where I came from, like I didn't have much money coming up. Most of my family members that I knew didn't have a lot of money. The friends that I had didn't have a lot of money. Um, so like to make that investment, unless you're really sure, like this is, you know, this is a, a great fit for me or at least a good fit for me, then consider other options. There's cheaper ways to further your education. So before you make that commitment and sign on those big bucks, because as you pointed out, colleges aren't cutting down costs just because it's online right now. <laughs> you really need to consider fit, um, consider what do you want to do further in your life. If you want to become a doctor or a teacher or a scientist, well, yeah, you kind of have to go to college, but you can go to community first and then go to college. If you know that you work better with your hands or you're not sure what you want to do, then explore trade schools as well. Apprenticeships, sometimes you get paid for apprenticeships versus having to pay out of pocket for it. So just, you know, always kept that in the back of my mind. Right. And also just for everyone at home, if you think I'm joking about about the whole college, like when Nelson was joking about the whole college is not cutting down the price, Harvard University, one of the most seed schools in, in the country, um, they cut their price down by like 2%. So instead of paying 60 grand, you're paying 40 grand. So <laughs> Think about that. That's for years. Don't joke. That is not a joke. That is fact. So, you know, with that being said, Marilyn, do you have any more questions you'd like to ask Malik? Well, my final question was just going to be, what would you say to your students kind of regarding um, college? Any advice um, to get like the pandemic? Um, But I think we covered that unless you have anything else to add. Um. Yeah, biggest thing is just make sure that you surround yourself with the right people. Use the resources that's available to you. Um, And also just, you know, be honest. I know, so as a teacher, one thing that I do hear a lot from students, um, and it wasn't necessarily my experience, but some students, it's a culture shock going into a new school, especially coming from a predominantly African-American community where everyone looks just like you. And then you go to a school where, now you're in the minority for the first time um, and learning how to navigate, even just being independent and having to do things on your own versus having like a counselor who's going to check up on you and having your teachers who's going to be calling home to your parents and say, hey, you got to do X, Y, and Z. I haven't gotten this from, but being honest and knowing when you need help is probably the first step because a lot of students, they kind of struggle with that privately. And then that leads to them sometimes dropping out or being like, well, this isn't for me. Well, use your resources first. Go out, get the help that you need. And the first step of that is acknowledging that you need that help. And it's okay. Everybody struggles. The struggles may look different from case to case, but everybody has a different struggle that they have to kind of 
go through in college. Absolutely. Well, with that being said, um, thank you for coming on the our HU Enrichment podcast today, HU Flow. Um, if you like what you see here, we have more down in the description below. You can follow us, like this video if you liked it, leave a comment, we appreciate it. Um, as always, I'm Marilyn, this is Steven, and today we heard from Mr. Nelson. So thank you everyone for watching and have a great day. Later guys.